the regular council meeting Monday, August 18, 2014. I mean, 2014 at 7 p.m. But now I'll come to order. Call the order, please. Roll call. Mayor McLaughlin? Here. Mr. McIntyre? Here. Mr. Zambach? Present. Mr. Reynolds? Here. Mr. Rick Lowry? Here. Mr. Craybach? Here. Mr. Mike Lowry? Here. All present. Thank you. Before we go on, welcome everyone. Thank you for being here tonight. The other thing is if you have a cell phone, if you would please turn it off or I just going to vibrate so it doesn't interrupt the meeting, we'd certainly appreciate it. And again, thank you for being here. We'll now have the invocation by Council Member Ethan Reynolds. Please. Would everyone stand, please? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for everyone gathered here tonight. Thank you that you have allowed us to all be able to attend this meeting. As we surrender ourselves, we ask that you would come by your Holy Spirit and inspire our hearts to allow us to make positive impact on our city. Yes, Lord, you are our light and our salvation, as well as our strength. So when, the, when there is error, give us understanding and light. And when, there, when we are at our weakest, give us strength. Amen. 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 Say the pledge, please. There's a flag in the back of the room. If you would turn around, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so I may have action on the minutes for regular meeting August the 4th, 2014. So Second. I have a motion by Mr. Craybock, or second by Mr. Reynolds, is that correct? He was fast. I got the game. We were out of the game. <laughs> you had that in a holster, John. <laughs> you look, please. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Craybar? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Pass 7 to 0. Thank you. Communications. None tonight. No communications. All right, we'll go ahead to the city manager's report now, please. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, I'd like to start the report this evening with an update on the Twin Creeks parcels, and our Director of Law, Mr. Pedraza, will give us an update. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Uh, just to remind everybody, we're talking about uh, the Phase 1 empty lots of Twin Creeks, uh, which the city uh, is in the process of acquiring Title II. Uh, because they did not sell a regular sheriff's auction going on two years now. And there is that statutory provision called a legalization program where uh, governmental entities uh, can acquire titles with that kind of property that's not productive, that's not bringing any tax money. Uh, the county prosecutor handles the legal part of that. Uh, they did that last year, and we ran into an issue uh, just a very strange, uh, unusual situation where because of the nature of the ownership, the prior ownership by, uh, which I believe was called Twin Creeks LLC, if I remember right, which involved the developer who had developed that company. Uh, he had passed away, his estate was bankrupt. And because that's a somewhat odd situation, the prosecutor's office inadvertently did not correctly serve notice of the suit on the estate of uh, the former developer of that LLC. And what that meant was in order for us to have proper clear title to be able to sell it to uh, another entity, and there is an interested party and is still interested, that we needed to go back to the prosecutor and ask them to essentially redo the, the foreclosure proceedings to make sure that they got proper service on the estate so that all the parties are properly notified according to law uh, and that's what's in process right now. I have signed uh, with the prosecutor uh, 29 joint motions to reopen each of those foreclosure cases. Uh, those are going to be approved by the court and then we essentially, pardon me, start the foreclosure process from scratch and what that simply means, uh, simply put, is that it's going to be a while before uh, the notices are sent, there has to be some publication done in the newspaper, much like you sometimes maybe see 
in the New Sun or other newspapers. Uh, eventually, we will get title of those properties, and hopefully and presumably, and we have no reason to believe otherwise, that potential purchaser is still going to be interested, and we will sell them and recoup some, some money that uh, we are in on for infrastructure and other expenses that the city has incurred in connection with that phase one portion of the Twin Creeks development. So it's all on track and uh, we're just gonna have to kind of sit patiently a little bit while that foreclosure proceeding takes place and then we will go ahead and effect the sale as we had hoped to do a few months ago. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Council, questions? We'll go to Mr. Rivers first. When is our court date? For each of those properties, or we don't have one we yet? We don't have one yet. What has to happen, Mr. Reynolds, is that the service has to be obtained on all the parties, and that includes us, some of the banks that held liens on uh, different portions of that lot. Uh, it has to go up to Michigan, where the residence of the developer was for his estate to get served notice. So we won't have a court date probably for a few weeks. I will let the council know when uh, there is a date. Uh, there won't actually be a court hearing, per se. It's kind of all done by paper, kind of a rubber stamp thing, because nobody objected to the foreclosure last time. I certainly don't expect anybody to object to it this time. So it'll just be a matter of the judge saying, essentially, if nobody objects by this date, I'm going to sign the order, and that'll transfer the, uh, the properties. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. McIntyre. Sir, I had a question about LLCs when the principal actor is no longer present. Um, in a situation with a regular estate, it would pass on to the nearest heir. Would an LLC work the same way, and you could have an interested family party come in and say, I'm the inheritor of this? And Absolutely, okay. yes. And the, the thing about real estate foreclosures is it, it's very, it's very uh, precise and careful to make sure anybody that has any potential interest, whether it be through the decedent's LLC or anything else, it is required that they get proper notice of that proceeding. The reason for that is you don't want a situation where there's a foreclosure and then 20 years later somebody comes up and says, I never got notice, I should have some interest in this property. That's it's to make sure that nobody can ever raise an issue in the future. I mean, the first go around with this, there, there were no issues brought up. There were no issues, nobody okay. raised an objection, right. Thank you. Yes, sir, what kind of uh, just rough timeline are we looking at, you know, just ballpark? I'm a little hesitant to answer that precisely, Mr. Lowry, only because I'm not sure what the probate court up in Michigan, I don't practice in Michigan, I'm not sure what their kind of timeline for that sort of thing usually is. Okay. If it was here in Ohio, I would say, you know, two to three months, but I can't tell you here with any uh, confidence that that's how quickly it happens up in Michigan. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, sir. Okay, then continuing with my manager's report, our finance discussion, I'll turn over to our finance director, Mrs. Harris. Thank you, Ms. Jones, mayor, council, and citizens. This is my July financial report. For total revenues we took in for the month of July, it was $433,249. And total expenses that we had in July was $343,324. Uh, Year-to-date revenue we've collected is $2,795,504. And the, just moving on down the year-to-date expenses is $2,650,644. So we're pretty much on track. Um, we spent about 57% of our year's expenditures, and we've also <laughs> taken in about 57% of our year's revenue. The 2000, let's see, July's income tax receipts, we collected $89,543.91, and our year-to-date income tax receipts are $645,143.78. Um, still showing that they are down a little bit. Our tax department is still aggressively um, working on collecting what is uh, on the books to be received. We're working on letters also to get out to people that work and live in the city that maybe have not filed their income tax or maybe have filed and not paid their income tax. So we do have some letters that we're um, working with our law director on working on aggressively collecting those now that we've got a little extra help in the office and we're able to to get on that. So we should have a good update next month. We have quite a few letters going out this month. 
Questions? Uh, something that's really concerns me is that uh, I read the letter, you know, from the tax administrator, and he was saying that the taxes are down quite a bit, you know, five percent. I think was, you know, around there. You know, that kind of really concerns me. As fragile as our budget is, you know, we said in the very beginning, you know, just one missed move, and we're going to go right, slide right into a negative number. Uh, I'm just I'm hoping it does not happen. More of a comment. And I also saw the sorting pool again, 49, negative 49,000. Last time we talked, it was negative 50 something thousand. So, you know, I'm just scared. You know, I'm, I'll just tell you, I'm, I'm scared right now. We are, we, we are all very aggressively in the office looking at all of our revenue, our anticipated estimated revenues to make sure that they are coming in and we're not spending against things that we're, that we're not going to be receiving. Um, we are tight. Um, and it's been tight for a few years, but uh, this year we're just trying to hold off um, capital projects. I know in a lot of the departments have not um, gone through. We've just used it for maintenance, day-to-day uh, -day expenditures, and uh, we continue as the, the managers to get together every month also to see what we can do to um, keep it under control as best we can. Yeah, I'm sure you are. You know, you guys, guys same concerns. To, to work under this, I'm very concerned. My house. <laughs> Anyone else? Any other questions? Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Uh, continuing with our service discussion, Service Director Mr. Kitko. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Good evening, Mayor and Council, members of the public. I just have a few items to uh, touch on. Hydro flushing is continuing. We are this week in the last section D, which is our old section of town. Um, so. If you get any issues with uh, iron or any debris in your water or in your wash, or get uh, any of that stuck in your, uh, especially a load of whites, the city building does have uh, um, free some iron out type stuff that you can rewash and it will take that out. Um, we are we have com we are started on storm drain repairs. I'm sure most have seen up on Main Street. We've had a couple collapses and we still have about another four or five. Uh, they're pretty intense repairs because these won't. Uh, type of catch basins have been in since uh, the 50s and they're all brick style so they're not an easy dig around pull out we're kind of trying to work around that brick uh, dirt patching uh, we've completed all the streets uh, I used to be able to say we had a first go round and we were already into a second we just completed the first round of uh, heavy dirt patching and we're touching on alley, uh, alleys as uh, Colleen was saying um, Without the street levy, we would have been pulling, uh, we spent about 15,000 this year in pothole repair, um, just in dirt patching materials. So without that street levy, that street construction fund where we were normally pulling those funds, uh, that just made it even tighter. So we do have room with that uh, levy fund still to keep doing these repairs without uh, really jeopardizing um, our streets. So I'm going to put that out there. And uh, the last thing, um, Swap 4G, which is a, um, a bunch of uh, county, municipal, villages, uh, southwestern Ohio groups that we put out bid for our road salt. We put it out for bid usually in June, July, and when they just open bids. Well, um, as you're well aware, it was a bad winter, and we're on another one of those uh, salt shortages. Out of the 250,000 tons of salt that were bid for our group, only 63,000 tons come back with bids on them. Cargill and Central were the only ones for, com for businesses like, uh, I think Montgomery County's been with one company forever, they bid on theirs. For instance, like us and 90% and of the other cities did not get a, a regular bid back. Uh, we got a bid from North America, everyone got a bid from North America, but they said we got 25,000 tons. You guys got to make it work. And that was at $117 a ton. And we paid 52 this last year. So uh, they're going to take it out for a rebid once this, uh, this bid gets uh, finished up and see. We had to do a survey, tell them how big a storage we have. We have about 100 tons we can store. How much do we have? We have 75 or a little bit more on hand currently. Um, and then how much do we you know, use on average? And I sent off about 200 tons of what we use on average in a, in a normal winter. 
if uh, what had happened last year is people were telling them that I'm out of salt, I'm out of salt, I need salt right now, they'd send a delivery truck with say 100 ton, get there and their barn's full. They were basically crying wolf and it hurt other communities that actually had bare barns uh, with no salt and didn't get any through most of the winter. So um, that's all I have for uh, the road salt, but I will be uh, I will keep you updated as I get more information and the reasonings behind uh, of what's going on and when maybe we get another bid out and uh, hopefully be able to procure at least uh, 50 to another 100, 100 ton of salt at a much uh, cheaper price. I can entertain any questions on that or any of the other topics I've uh, reported on. Are you going to be able to take advantage of that 25,000 tons that was offered at that price or are they pulling everything and back to square Out of the 25,000 that's going to be split by, I mean if I could get 20 ton of it, I'm going to try to get what I can just to make sure I got something coming, but that just Gonna, I'll probably put this out in a couple council meetings coming up that we're probably going to be in a full-blown conservation effort this uh, coming up winter. So we're hoping for a, a decent uh, or a nice winter. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> yes, Mr. Um, I know some sinkholes on Lincoln Avenue, you know, Lincoln Street. There was a sink, there's a sinkhole on the side. One, you know, uh, looks like that you probably repaired a main there. Next to it, though, was a good size hole. The two on that same block? Yeah. Yeah, and then there's one on Scott right down from it. Right. And next week, we're going to be paving those. Oh, you are? Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's my Another thing is street signs. You know, is there any, you know, is there any plans of getting new street signs or getting the old ones repainted? Or uh, are you talking the names of streets or the regulatory? Yeah. Uh, names will be. Um, we just got all our regulatory in from the grant project we're working on. We just got the shipment in, and part of the shipment in is we try to take a thousand or two thousand of our own money and yes, do some of the street signs. I think we did uh, just under half the city last year. We're going to try uh, to get it completed this year and have all new uh, name signs. They won't be um, fancy. They'll be the basic green with the white lettering. But yes, yeah, so hopefully by the end of this year we have them all new. That'll be an improvement of having nothing. I mean, there are some places you can't even read it. Exactly. Anyone else? Mr. Kicker. I have a question. Uh, on <clears throat> bike path, multi-use trail, can we uh, get that mode? Is that a possibility? I believe it needs mode, or have we just had it mode? What part? Um, well, the, I think the path from going from probably 235, you know, the other direction. I say we mow the path uh, at least. I know once there's some areas that we can't mow. Oh, oh yeah, like on the side hill. Township help, help us with. Yes, that's what I'm referring. Yeah, to. I, oh, okay. I got to call into Bethel Township right now, and um, the administrator over there is working with trying to get that scheduled. Okay, um, so yeah, to get them. The I've been talking to the individual that does it, and that's why I was asking. Yeah. <clears throat> he asked me to ask. And the lights on 235, and again the bike path. As far as you know, they're functioning and things are fine. Uh, a couple people have actually walked a path that uh, right before the council meeting said they were working. Okay. And that works if the person pushes a button that's walking the path, is that correct? Uh, it, works the via, it works via motion in, or infrared and push button. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Thank you, Mr. Kiko. You're welcome. Continuing with the planning zoning discussion, our planning director, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, uh, City Manager Jones, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of public. I'd like to share with you the July 2014 planning department activity. We have five complaints come through the office. It brings a year-to-date total up to 38. I issued 32 yellow tags slash verbal warnings or letter warnings. It brings our total up to date to 98. Uh, 11 nuisance violation notices went out. It brings a year-to-date total up to 28. Uh, 11 grass violations was sent, brings your year-to-date total up to 92. Uh, property abatements, we have one nuisance abatement and nine grass abatements. Our year-to-date our year uh, total on abatements is one nuisance, 22 grass. We have 18 zoning permit applications come through the office, brings your year-to-date total up to 60. Our compliance rates, uh, uh, monthly yellow tags to violations sat at 66%. Our year-to-date total on that is 71. Our nuisance violations to abatement is at 91% brings our year-to-date total up to 96. Our grass violations to abatements kind of took a shot down to 18% this month. 
uh, but our year-to-date total is 76% on that. I'd like to share with you some of the current work that I'm working on. Fall and winter projects, uh, I'd like to start a housing survey, very similar to the sidewalk repair placement program that we started this year up in Northwoods. We're seeing actually great success with that program, so um, figured why not extend that on the property maintenance. I know some members of council have had some concerns about some of the exterior of the houses. So, uh, like I said, it will be uh, instituted similar to the sidewalk uh, program. Um, it's going to be a very large project, so we're going to have to do it over a course of uh, multiple years. Uh, we're also going to look into vacant housing and landlord registration ordinances. We're also going to, I'm also going to be, be preparing for the hanging flower baskets in spring of 2015. We're going to try to do that for this summer. Uh, some things got sidetracked, so we're just going to push on the next spring. I think it's going to be real nice to look down Main Street and see a bunch of nice uh, hanging baskets on the street. We also have Community Walk Day coming up. That's scheduled for September 2nd, 2014. Uh, it can't be canceled for lack of participation. Uh, the budget is really too thin to put an ad in the new Carlisle News. I really need to reserve the rest of my legal ad publishing or for, pub for my publication budget for legal ads for Planning Board and BZA. Right now, we don't have any uh, walkers registered. If we don't have any registered by Friday, August 22nd, we will have to cancel the event. New Carlisle is open for business. Uh, I will begin that feature again next month. However, I did stop down and talk to the home store. Uh, they are very interested in coming back to New Carlisle. Um, so I'll be working with their, the owner to identify available spots for their return. Farmer's Market every Saturday until September 27th, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, it's, it's along Main Street, downtown New Carlisle. If you've not visited, I highly recommend you come down and just take a look. Right now we started blocking off the eastern portion of 235, for about four to five feet from the curb. That gives additional walking space. Um, great addition. I think it allows people to flow easier and, and it doesn't interfere with traffic patterns. Got mixed reviews from that, some positive, some negative. CVS update. The building will be turned over to CVS Corporate around September 2nd, 2014, so they can begin doing their uh, stocks. Um, signage on the building and directional signs around the parking areas have been placed. Uh, landscaping is now in the ground and also uh, the bike racks and the park bench that's going along Church Street are not yet installed, but they will be before opening day. Planning board will meet Thursday, October 20, I mean, excuse me, Thursday, August 21st at the New Carlisle Fire Station. They'll be uh, hearing comments and voting on a lot split for Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Uh, Chrysler Dodge Jeep does need to split off a portion of the northern outlot due to the property line extending onto the entrance and exit. Uh, pavement from into the shopping center. Vacant housing. The report is not completed, so I do apologize about that. It's probably hovering around the 75 to 80 that we usually do get, though. I do believe that is all I have for you. I'd be happy to uh, entertain any questions. Yes. <coughs> yes, Rand. Yes, sir. Um, any information on the building where CBS is now? Is anyone interested in it? Is it for sales? Is it going to be leased? Have you heard anything whatsoever? I've heard a quite, a, quite a few different, and it's all purely speculation at this point. You know, um, I'm usually, yeah, when something major will be going on, either the city manager will be notified or I will be notified. We haven't had anything in concrete. I've heard it's going to become a grocery store. I've heard that Dollar General is going to move to that side and expand and knock out a wall. Uh, but with it being pure speculation at this point, I really don't feel confident with really saying anything set stone at this point. Okay. Thank sure. you. Yes. Uh, Mr. Bridge, I think um, the date of the community walk we had changed to the third, did, didn't we, since that was Labor Day and we were afraid to have it the first day back from the holiday weekend? I do believe that you are correct, Ms. Jones. So it should be September the third. Thank you. Anyone else for Mr. Bridges? Thank you for the report. We appreciate it. Okay, then with our fire discussion, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Captain Bowman for being here, replacing Chief Phillips. Um, he had to be away from uh, the meeting tonight, and I appreciate you coming and filling me in for him. Chief Phillips um, passes on his regards for missing the meeting, but he had a prior engagement. Um, he gave me the information to go over with tonight, and we're going to go over the July response times. For July of 2014, New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 121 calls for service during the month of July. Um, fire responses, we had nine fire responses um, with an average response time of 4 minutes and 38 seconds. 
We also responded to 112 emergency medical calls with an average response time of 4 minutes 55 seconds. When we say response time, that is from the time that we are dispatched till the time that we are on scene. So everything's less than five minutes of time. Um, Elizabeth Township, since we cover Elizabeth Township with a contract, there was 11 calls for service in Elizabeth Township. Um, there was one, one fire response and 10 emergency medical calls. Um, nine of the responses were inside Elizabeth Township and two responses were inside the village of Cast Town. We did have two significant events. Um, on July 3rd, we had a two vehicle crash at New Carlisle Pike and Funderburg Road. There were no serious, or serious injuries on that. And on July 26th, there was a structure fire um, on, at the corner of State Route 202 and 571. Um, we responded with the ladder truck and a crew to assist with the extinguishment of the fire and overhaul after the fire. Um, we just need to remind everybody that any any and all emergencies need to go through the 911 system and that way they can be responded to accordingly and promptly if you call the firehouse um, to re to report an emergency it's going to take us the delayed response to get there because we have to call in to dispatch to let them know where we're going so the quicker way to get help there is to call 911 he also um, sent me copy of the Ohio burning and recreational fire standards, um, the Ohio fire codes, chapter three. I'm not sure if you want me to go over all of this or read all of this. No, you don't, it's not. Okay, <laughs> if there's any questions, I'll try to answer anything that I have, but. Hey, what? Well, yes, Mr. Lowe. Thank you. Yes, I was, had a question for yes. Chief Phillips. Okay. And I hope I don't put you on the spot because that does not pertain to anything you just talked about. Okay? Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, in my house are several fire extinguishers. Uh -huh. My wife just brought to my attention the other night that several of them, the needle is in the red. My question, one time, New Carolina Fire Department, <clears throat> excuse me, you could drop off fire extinguishers and get them refilled. Is that still possible? And if not, what is the proper way to dispose of a fire extinguisher? You can drop them off. We do not refill them okay. um, because you have to have a certain haz hazardous materials contract to be able to do that. Okay. Put the put the carbonated stuff back inside okay. them. Um, you can drop them off. You can drop them off at the firehouse, and we will dispose of them properly. Okay. But we I do not replace them or recharge okay, them. Okay, that's fine. I mainly wanted to know how, how to dispose of them because even if the needle's in the red, there is some pressure in there. There is a little bit of pressure, right. but it's it's not enough to put out a fire. <laughs> right, but I was talking about disposing them, throwing them in, you know, whatever they yeah. do with them. Yeah, if you drop them off, we'll, we'll see okay. to it that they're Thank disposed properly. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Thank you. Well, again, you did an excellent job. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. You didn't ask your question. Oh, you have a question? No, your, your question. How oh. your question? Oh, well, I, I could ask you that question. <laughs> he would like me to ask, how is the equipment? Oh, the equipment. Um, everything up to speed? Everything, everything is up to running? snuff. We are actually working very hard to make sure that everything is. We're making several changes on different equipment, and we've got lots of stuff going on at the firehouse. I encourage everybody to stop by at any time. Um, Chief Phillips didn't give me permission, but we're working on putting together um, an open house, hopefully, during Fire Prevention Week, which I believe is the first week of October. So we're working on that today, and hopefully we'll be able to put together an open house and ever open to the public and come on out, see what we're all about, and, and see what changes we've been making and see the equipment and some demonstrations and everything. So that's, we just started working on that this past week. So. You'll be updated soon. Thank you. Did you have a question? No. Keep looking like you. No. I'm trying to trick me. No, I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Also, I'd like to just um, let everybody know if you would be interested in, in the information about the open burning restrictions in the city. We have the paperwork available at the city building. It's available in English and in Spanish. So if you have any questions, stop by and pick up a copy of the, the paperwork that uh, the chief provided for us. And thank you again, Captain Bowman. Um, I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Um,
As you'll notice, Sergeant Underwood is not here tonight, and nor do I have his monthly report. So I'm, I'm afraid he must have been called away for something at the last minute. Uh, we'll have to catch up with him next month on, on the report for the month. Um, under informational items in your packet, you saw a flyer regarding a seminar for bridges out of poverty. Anybody that would be interested in attending this, um, it is a uh, seminar that will be held on September the 15th, which is a Monday. It starts at 8.30 in the morning. It does not say how long it goes. However, it does include a breakfast and a lunch, so that leads me to think it might be an all-day seminar. But we have a flyer at the city building. If anybody is interested in this seminar, it's $20. Um, and it's basically is to help you have a greater understanding of the challenges facing those in poverty and learn how to help people develop decision making and skills for success. Um, so I encourage anyone that is interested in that to stop by and pick up the paperwork on that. Also in your packet was a uh, memo our finance director had received from the Clark County Budget Commission. This was the first year I've ever seen this memo. I don't know that maybe we've gotten it every time, but previous finance directors didn't share the information, but there is actually a hearing, a public hearing, that's gonna talk about the local government fund. So I know council had asked me to work on a resolution and a letter to council or to the county commissioners, but I, I've got a draft, but I thought that I would like to go to this hearing and see who is actually on the board or the commission to see if the county or the Western Clark County is at all represented on that commission um, to find out if not, why we are not, and to get more information about the commission because basically we don't, it's kind of secret. <laughs> if you look at the website, there's nothing on it. So uh, I want to go to the hearing and I would like to, I'm going to stand up and kind of give our comments regarding what how fair or unfair we think the local government fund is being di um, divided right now. I was thinking that maybe the letter should go just concerning the casino funds, but we'll see how this goes, and then maybe go from there as far as letting our our thoughts be heard. Um, I would encourage any members of council who might be available to also attend the hearing. Probably the more people there backing us, more of an impression that we would make. But um, that is Wednesday, August the 27th, 10 o'clock in the morning, the county auditor's conference room. That is a public hearing, so that is open to the public members and uh, citizens of New Carlisle. If you would like to know why New Carlisle is not getting what we feel is our fair share of the county's money, please feel free to join me at that meeting. <laughs> the more the merrier. And at this point, um, I believe the council would like to have a discussion regarding possible flying of a particular flag in the city. In the city. I thought this might be a time to talk about it. I didn't read evidently my emails today, so I'm in the dark and we having a conversation. Okay. We're talking about a flag, I've, I've read that once before, a flag for the city of New Carlisle. It was not like a permanent flag, it is a temporary flying for a particular day in October. Um, um, it was brought to my attention by two council members. They would like to have the flag put up um, just for that date. It is of uh, great historical um, significance, this particular flag. Um, Mr. McIntyre, I'm sorry, I don't remember the significance of that date. W uh, was it the first date that it was flown by George Washington? Well, I think Mr. Reynolds has more information more on More information, on that okay. Than I do. okay. All right. Maybe sorry. he could let us know what. All right, then, Bill, you're going to follow up? Sure. All right. You went first, go ahead. All right. Uh, so the flag is the appeal to have the flag was our nation's first flag. Uh, then it was followed by the Gatson flag, and then through a series of flags all the way up to the Stars and Stripes we have today. So it has a very historical remnants because it was the nation's first flag. It was, flown by, it was commissioned by George Washington. He paid for it. And it was flown from vessels that were just rebel rousing and, fly, and flying. Jeez, uh, 1760, 74, sorry. So they were sailing up to these British vessels and attacking them, <laughs> and they were storming them. And it was appeal to heaven. It was on the flag with the Liberty Tree. Uh, and it was flown at our nation's capital at the time, which is Philadelphia. It was flown on towns and uh, floating batteries on, on riverbanks, just all over the country. Uh, the tree is known as the Tree of Liberty, which uh, we often refer to or talk about in daily political discussions. Uh, so uh, it, it, the reason that the pine tree is there was that the pine tree really affects uh, most of our livelihoods back in the 1700s, which would be furniture, tools, ships, uh, anything to make a fire. So 
That's what, uh, there's a lot of historical information about it. Uh, if you ever watched the John Adams series on HBO, it, it's on there. It was our nation's first flag. It discusses its importance. And if you watch the opening credits, it's there. The purpose of the flag uh, is to show solidarity, conviction, and encouragement for the fight of liberty. So. So, actually, what are you uh, wanting to do then? You're talking about flying in on a certain day. On October 1st, or? yeah, October 1st in 1774, the flag was first flown. It was commissioned by, uh, at the time, uh, General George Washington. And it, I think it, uh, Indiana's flying it over their state capital. Arkansas's flying it. 14 other cities are flying it. I figured we should follow suit because this is our n nation's first flag. Per se, so this would be something that we would put underneath the, the American, American flag, flag at just for a day, and then we can take it back down, like yeah. we did with the Purple Heart flag when we flew it, Ooh. and other flags. And you can these can be purchased, I take it. From yes, uh, you can purchase them online, or uh, Jeff, uh, he can you, you can buy them from him for two dollars, right? Yeah. So, and I mean, you can buy them wherever you uh, online from Jeff. Uh, they're easy to come by. I have two. I have one flying outside my house and. I have another one that I got, so for my room. So, okay, uh, Council, Bill, any comments? Follow up. Yes. And, and one follow up to that: when Mr. Reynolds came to me with the idea, I thought it was really interesting. Um, I looked through uh, the history of the flag and found similar information that he had. It had been, it'd been used by George Washington um, and uh, the Massachusetts colony, other sort of colonial navies to harass the Royal Navy. And if you know me, there's nothing I like better than harassing the Royal Navy. <laughs> The, uh, so, so it has it has some historical significance to it, and the one thing that I was concerned with, because I was always trying to be very conscious about this, about perceptions, is it does say um, appeal to heaven, which could have some religious connotations to it. And our law director said, well, we need to be careful about this because um, it's also used by some political groups, and it does have the religious connotation. And if you know the First Amendment, it has the Establishment Clause saying uh, the government, the federal government, cannot. Um, establish a singular religion, and that was later in the Supreme Court cases brought down to the state and local level. And I was going through this and, and looking at some of the other cases here, and I found um, when it comes to the separation of church and state, because it does have heaven in it, which could be con very contentious and ostracize people, there's a case in 1971 called Lemon v. Kurtzman, and from that we get what's called the Lemon Test. That's not just for used cars, it's also for church and state issues. And under the Lemon Test, um, it says that the statute, the thing being presented, it must have a secular legislative purpose for it to be able to be presented um, as such. And so looking at this and, and knowing the history of it, I say, okay, well, as long as we make clear, as long as we say we're not as a government body promoting one religion or the other, we're talking about American history, George Washington, the founding fathers, um, other cities have adopted for similar purposes, it should be able to pass the lemon test because it does have a secular uh, purpose to it. And on um, the note that it's been used by some political groups, that would be a violation of the Hatch Act because the Hatch Act states that a government entity, a body, cannot endorse a political party or a political candidate. Individual people certainly can, but you couldn't have the Department of Commerce supporting one candidate or whatever it may be. And so, like the religious issue, if we come and say we're not bringing this flag forward because we uh, like one particular political point of view, then it should be able to patch the hat, pass the Hatch Act criteria, I believe. And so I, I initially wanted it, thought it would be best to have it on President's Day, Washington's birthday, as was his flag, but knowing the history of it, that it was in October, which is coming up, and it would be the, the anniversary of it, I felt that that would be um, a, a good time to present it, and we could say we're presenting it at this time and the anniversary of the flag, and in the same way, we're doing it for an historical purpose, not because we're pushing a religious or political agenda. So I felt that was both in line with what the law recommends and keeping in connection with our country's history. Our law director, what, how do you feel as far as our... Uh, somehow Mr. McIntyre must have stole the presentation I was going to make to you, and it was very well said, Mr. McIntyre. Uh, everything you said is correct. My concern when it was brought to my attention that there was some interest in flying this flag was simply that in my own research, uh, certainly not exhaustive, but it didn't take much to find that there are some religious and or political groups that have adopted this flag as a symbol of their, uh, of their views, which is perfectly fine. Uh, I guess the bottom line is, as long as it is clear from our record, 
if you decide that you choose to fly this flag, that the purpose of your choosing to fly it is because of its historical patriotic significance and not because of any religious or political views which others may choose, and as is the right, to use the flag to represent, uh, then there can be no legal objection to it. If the purpose of flying the flag is for whatever reason to espouse a religious or political view, then as law director I have to recommend uh, not doing so simply because I think our city's money and our tight financial situation is better spent on safety and streets than paying me or another lawyer a lot of money to potentially defend a suit that somebody could certainly bring uh, claiming that uh, rights have been violated much as Mr. McIntyre has explained. So, so a historical sense is what we will be looking at exactly. in this particular case, is that correct? That's correct. City Manager, how, how do you feel? I have two questions. Sure. Um, where in particular did you want it, like on every city flagpole or just oh. like the one on Main Street? Just the one on Main Street I think would be good. I, I, I think flying on every flagpole would be. Okay, and are you going to be able to provide us with the flag yes. or do you? Okay, I can. all right. Then I had three questions actually. <laughs> I, I do have some concern on, um, so I mean, I have nothing against the flag and I love history and you know, so I don't have anything against the flag. My concern is representing everybody in the city. So if we have somebody that comes in and wants to put a flag up for the KKK or for a Muslim religion or something like that, do we then, because we were allowed to put up this other flag, are we going to be held to having to put up these other flags too? That's, that's, good. that's a good question. Uh, <coughs> Mrs. Jones, uh, again, <coughs> because if we make it clear on our record that our purpose in wanting to fly the flag is because of the historical significance of it, then and not because of any religious or political uh, viewpoint, then we're not opening up any kind of precedence for other controversial yeah, political okay. religious groups to uh, to want to have an opportunity to flag their or to fly their flag. Right. Okay. I just want to okay. make sure one, we're not one, one minute, please, from council, if you would. Uh, the audience. I mean, is the audience here tonight for this particular situation? Is that what everyone's here for? Is there anyone that would like to speak for the group? If you had, if you would, go up to the podium, identify yourself. That way we can get the audience's viewpoints also before council starts discussing. I would appreciate it. Jeff Bertzel, I'm the pastor at First United Methodist Church. <clears throat> um, I represent a group that is uh, a community prayer team. But the purpose for the flag from our point of view has to do with the history of it in the sense that those people who flew that flag originally, part of what they were saying was that they were in covenant with one another. The pine tree is a symbol of covenant. So for me, every time I look at that flag, what it reminds me of is the fact that I am a member of a community that believes in liberty and freedom for each person. It reminds me of the fact that I am one who is in covenant with every other person in my community. I think about the people who flew that flag first, people of integrity, honesty, people who spoke truth, people who wanted the best for all those people that they knew. It was the reason why we fought against the British in the first place was because we believed that we could make a better life for ourselves. And that's exactly what they did. And so part of what it does for me is it reminds me I'm in community with all of you. I'm in covenant with all of you and I have a responsibility to each and every one of you to live that kind of life and to help wherever I can. Wherever there are problems within my community, I have a responsibility to be there to help people, and I see it and do it many times throughout the week, where there are people who are in the midst of addictions, where there are people who are in the midst of poverty, where there are people who are in the midst of concerns of marital problems, whatever the case may be. Part of my job as being a member of this community is to be able to help wherever I can. And that flag reminds me every time I see that pine tree that I'm in covenant with every other person here and every other person throughout this nation 
to make sure that we live responsibly to each other and to ourselves, and that we take care of one another, that we live together as a community. And I believe by flying that flag, we have the ability to say to the rest of the people who are driving through New Carlisle, these are the kind of people we are here in New Carlisle. And I would suggest that not only that we fly it just in October, but that we would make it a permanent part of the flags of New Carlisle. And I will also be honored to give those flags to you to make sure that you can fly them so you don't even have to worry about the cost. I'll ask the group, I mean, uh, take it, Reverend, speaking for all of you, is that correct? Is there anyone else that would like to speak in the group that's here tonight for this? Thank you, appreciate it. The one thing, when you first got up, you said you have a prayer group. Uh, and it's a prayer group that you have, is that correct? And that's what you're representing here tonight. And we had a statement from our law director talking about religion and so forth. You understood that part, I believe, before we started discussing it. Okay, just wanted to be clear on that. Uh, okay, open it up to council now. We'll go to Mr. Lowry first. He's been Thank you. at me a lot. Go ahead. Mr. Woodrow, okay, you said we have to make a council make it perfectly clear that it has no religious implications. Okay. My recommendation is that you make it clear what your motivation is. Frankly, that's something we try to do with most legislation. Right. It's important right. in this case. Mostly. Okay. In this case, how is that done so that, as Kim mentioned, whoever can't come along and say, I don't believe you. I want to sue so I can put my flag up there as well. How can we do it to make it rock solid? But that is the reason it's up there. It has nothing to do with the it is. Does it come in ordinance form, a resolution form, and just a motion by council? Well, or most of our motions are done orally. We don't usually, right. you know, they, they end up in writing on, on the minutes. But, uh, exactly. I, I, I suggest it would require nothing more complicated than any number of you make statements much like Mr. McIntyre and Mr. Reynolds, uh, just very, very briefly explaining the reason for your vote in one way or the other. Okay. It doesn't have to be anything long or complicated. Uh, but again, if, if five of you end up saying that your your desire to fly the flag is religious, not historical, then as a law director, I start getting very concerned. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you. Well, appreciate that. Uh, so, another Mr. Lowry. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Jones and uh, Mr. Pedraza, I had just a couple of questions when I originally heard about this. And I'm not against it. I just, you know, one, obviously your opinion is very important on this and legally. Uh, two things, whose property is the actual flagpole? Is that the city's or whose is it? That's been a question that's come up several times. That um, is in the right of way. That's in the right of way. Uh, it's definitely not CVS's because they don't want ownership of it. Right. And at that point in time, I think it was Mr. Schlinker. Mr. Schlinker, that one. So, it's, I mean, it's in the right of way. Um, the last I heard possession was Mr. Schlinker. Um, I, that would be the best answer I have. Okay. Uh, kind of, that's kind of a two part issue is, is if we put it up and someone wants to claim that it, if CVS, say, say it offended CVS just for conversation, not saying it would. Could, I mean, could. Could CVS come to us and say that, you know, this poll's in our, in our property or in front of our business and anything there? I guess it's possible. Um, I don't think anybody thinks that's very likely, so I'm not sure okay. that I would worry about it. Right. The truth. And then one more for Ethan. You, did you guys say it was October 1st you wanted to go with? Yes. Okay. That, that's the first time it that? flew. Okay, I, I thought somebody had said the fourth is what I was I asking. probably said that because that, that was stuck in my mind. Okay, so it's the first. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So it's a Wednesday. We'll stay on this side for the moment. Mr. Craybock <laughs> on the right hand side. Um, but that's not to replace the American flag. No. 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 Uh, stars and stripes will fly it high. <laughs> okay, stars and stripes are still flying high. And, okay, and that's, what I, that's my only question. I know more now than I did yesterday because you know yesterday I was a little bit confused and you know and um, so I know more after this week. That's okay. On this side, yes, sir. Please. Uh, I can see October first as a, as a political statement in honoring George Washington. And I personally hold him in great esteem. 
uh, is October 1st or even the entire month of October because the article Mr. Reynolds showed me said that the flag was flown at Mr. Washington's insistence for the month of October 1774 is either the date of October 1st or the month of October of significant religious or specific political significance in our country. And I don't know of it. I, I'm assuming it's not. That way, I was looking at an association thing inadvertent. Other than Washington flying the flag uh, and commissioning it now. Thank you. The election's not till November, so that, that shouldn't be connected with the yeah, election. And I'm not sure all of those people are really that loyal to our country, but that's another <laughs> <laughs> Not another story. <laughs> different, different topic. <laughs> Anyone else, Council? Anything you'd like to say? Uh, I, I want to thank all of you for being here tonight. It's nice to see some fresh faces for a change, to be quite honest with you. And thank you for bringing that to us. We really do thank you. Does anyone else like to say anything from out the audience? Okay. Uh, Council, what would we like to? I think someone did. Did somebody say you'd like to speak, please? Yeah. Would you go up to the podium and identify yourself, please? <coughs> My name is Jerry Gracie. Uh, well, I have a business in town. We don't actually live in town. Um, on the historic significance, uh, I love history. That's my hobby. As far as I know, um, in all my reading on the Revolutionary War, the Civil War was one of my favorites. It was flown October 1st, just that had to be the date that, that it was ready to be flown. Um, like Mr. McIntyre said, Mr. Reynolds said, George Washington commissioned it. It was used for two or three years during the Revolutionary War. I feel like to realize that the federal government was uh, uh, not that strong. And there were lots of flags flown by lots of people, by lots of groups during the Revolution. And it was actually flown for two or three years. The uh, official United States flag was 13 stripes, and, and the stars all wasn't adopted until almost after I think the Revolutionary War was even ended or towards the end of it. So it wasn't tied to any political group or any set of things, George Washington Commission, for the reason that they, to Jones, uh, said, and it just October 4, 1st was the first date it was flown in 1774, but it was flown for several years afterwards. Uh, if you look at the pain stuff of the time period, you'll see for those two or three years, especially the first part of the war, there was all kinds of flags flown. The snake cut up, don't tread on me. Uh, John Paul Jones, don't give up the ship. There's a flag based on that, on his comment, flown by uh, the different ships, uh, a lot of the caps of the, of the ships that were privateers, and also the actual United States Navy that was not really, it was there, but it wasn't like you think of today. Someone had their own flags. So um, it wasn't put out by one specific uh, political group or uh, a religious group. So that's the more of the history behind it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Grayson. Uh, we have, how many flag poles do we actually have in the city? We have one here at Smith Park, we have one at Hensley Park, and where else do we fly a flag that we take care of? Those two we take care of, the correct? Water or the no, just those two, two places. No, just those two places you name. Those two are the ones that we take care of, is that correct? That, that are official yeah, flag poles, yes. Yeah. Right, and then the one that is we just discussed on Main Street is actually being taken care of by an individual, I believe, that uh, is with the American Legion. So we would have to, he's, I know, purchased the flag that he's flying up there and takes care of it and so forth. So we would have to approach him about doing something with that, I believe. Uh, the idea of just one day, I don't think one day, from my own feelings, would be adequate to be able to do that. Let's do it a month. A month. Let's do it yeah, a month. October month. To me, if, if we deem that it's something that we want to go forward with, I don't understand why we would want to do it just one day. It would seem that it would be better to fly it for a longer oh. period of time to let people understand and know what it is. Oh, I totally agree. I just wanted to make sure, like, the yeah. point was saying a day was to get points in the ball game, you know, and then we could, if, right. <laughs> so, like, if we chose to do it again next year, we could do it a little again, bit longer. Again, we just have to make sure that people understand that it's not a religious uh, undertaking on the council's part or the city's part. That's the whole point of that. Uh, I would entertain a 
motion from council. That's what we would need to do. Mr. Madron will get a Correct. motion from council and a second to vote on this. Uh, and the motion, I think, should read or say, if you would, for a time period also. All right. Okay, if somebody would like to make that motion. All right, Mr. Mayor, I move. Yes that we fly the Appeal to Heaven flag from the 1st of October to the end of October to signify uh, our country's historical uh, premise behind the flag. Second. Okay, now we have a full, uh, motion and a second. What I would all like to hear with that also though is that we fly it on all three poles. If indeed we get the flags, uh, do we have interested parties that would supply the flags? Do we have that? Yeah, pass. We do. Thank you. Appreciate that. So we have now all three polls that we're going to be doing that. And the city will handle two. We need to talk to the other party that's handling the one. And did you want to say something, Mr. Lauer? Yes. Is so somebody right? going to contact Mr. Schlenker? That is his flagpole. Talk to whom, please? Mr. Schlenker. Well, Mr. Slanker is no longer his with brother, us, as you know. His brother. I understand, but again, that's on city property. That's the other thing. Okay. It's not actually on, they, they no longer really have a claim to it. Maybe they've, they've said that the city can have it or whomever is taking care of it at that point, from my understanding. Okay. Okay. Maybe just let him know. Okay, we have a motion and we have a second. Uh, All right, hang on. Okay, please, you, you want to get what it actually says now? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Just in case. Sure. Just to we understand. Uh, motion to fly a pill to heaven flag from what dates again? From October 1st to the 31st. That's the end of October. On the three specific flagpoles. After being con after. Three city owned flagpoles. Right? Well, there's two city owned, and the other one is really not city owned, but we need to contact the individual and take them care of. Three flag That's not Uh, to show historical, what, what would we use yeah. to show historical value? Historical significance. Or historical significance. Historical significance of the flag uh, that in the United States, I guess, is what we want to say. Right? Yeah. Sounds good. Once you have it there, if you would read it again so we all understand it. You. Motion to fly a field of heaven flag from October 1 to October 31st on three flag poles to show the significance of, of the flag for the United States, the United States of America. Okay. Is that? Yeah, that's good. Work for you? Okay. Yeah, first thing. Bill McIntyre. Mr. McIntyre. <laughs> If you would, then once you have it ready there, if you would go ahead and call for a vote, I'd appreciate it, please. Mr. Zambach. Uh, yes, due to the great historical significance and the fact that I was unaware of it until this was brought to my attention, uh, I do vote in favor of it. Yes. Mr. Reynolds, you said yes. 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 <laughs> Mr. Rick Lowry. Due to the fact that it has, the flag has historical significance and absolutely no religious significance. I vote yes. Uh, Mr. Craver. I don't know if I can handle that speech. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I, I think the city uh, deserves that and I'm glad to see the shining faces out here that would like to have it. I think that's a wonderful thing. We actually get an interested group to try and promote New Carlisle a little bit more. Thank you for being here, everybody. Yes, my answer is yes, yes, yes. I can find one. Okay, one yes. We're not on that. Mr. McIntyre. Due to this historical significance and that my great, great, great grandfather probably fought under that flag to secure this country's independence, yes. Motion to fly the flag passes 7 to 0. Seven to zero. Yeah. City manager, you'd like to go back to a uh, police report now? Yes, I would. Uh, Thank you, Sergeant, Sergeant for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Mayor, council, citizens, and thank you for being here. Tonight's report for the uh, Clark County Sheriff's Office deputies, 
July, the new trial, the deputies took 25 reports, reports by county deputy, there was 43, which total reports for the city for the month of July was 68. Miles patrol, 2,169. Miscellaneous calls, 133. And follow-up investigations, there was 10. On traffic stops, there were 56 with 54 citations issued. OVI arrests, there were seven arrests and nine OVI charges out of that. Driving under suspension, there was eight. Parking citations, we had two. Abandoned vehicles, one. Non-injury accidents, one. Under arrest information, we had four criminal arrests with four charges. We had, uh, actually, I didn't type it in, but we had three juvenile arrest with three charges, and that was the tagging incident we had. Uh, we had no warrants filed. Under assaults, we had one, breaking entering, we did have none. Thefts, we had four, vandalism, five, 911 hangups, we had six. Phone harassment, we had none. Domestic violence, there was, domestic violence with an assault, there was none. Uh, domestic violence verbal, we had two. We did one lockout, and we had five alarms and 31 assists. Then in July, Deputy Brian Beller attended a drug uh, evaluation and classification DEC program and is now certified as a drug recognition expert. That's a DRE. And I'm proud to announce that at about, well, I shouldn't be, I'm not proud of this, but I'm proud that we had a guy to respond. We had a crash out here in, in front of uh, the entrance to Smith Park here at 10 to 7. A uh, lady lost control of her vehicle, uh, and it appears to be a medical incident right now, but we are investigating it. Uh, it was a two-car crash. Uh, she, uh, no one appeared serious, but she was seizuring at the time. Um, because we have the drug recognition expert, I brought him in. Uh, we're going to see if she's on prescription medication, or if she's on something else, or if it was just, in fact, a seizure. And in a case like this, if she's on medication and it says she shouldn't be driving, um, she could be charged with that. So that's what our drug recognition guy is. Uh, I called him at home. It's his night off. He didn't hesitate. Jumped in his personal vehicle, came up here, and he's out helping our deputy in town investigate the accident. And that's what it's all about. We have been very fortunate up here in New Carlisle to have the caliber of deputies we have that are making these kinds of stops. And I'm sincere about that. It, it, it seems like we get two or three OVIs uh, each week out of here. And people are starting to get the message, if you're going to drink and drive, or if you're high and you're driving, you better avoid nuclear life. And I think that's what we all want, is to keep our families safe, to keep us safe, and these people, if they're going to do that, they can go someplace else. Back to the report. Most of the city and county schools are back in session this week, and deputies will be patrolling school zones. Please remember, it's a 20 mile an hour speed limit in a school zone, and also school buses will be in our city and county roads to pick up and drop off students. So please drive with caution. We'll have new bus drivers, we'll have kids that's never been to school, and the bus driver actually is directing your children on and off that bus. If those red lights are on, don't go around that bus under no circumstances. Because as long as those lights are on, you're supposed to stop. The bus driver may do a signal something like this. Like this. Is, yeah. Well, that's, but I mean to bring the kids across. Yeah, just like that. Okay, so we, we, different districts have a little different signal. But they'll make a hand motion, and I've had people say uh, while I'm writing the citation, well, they told me to go on around. No, they didn't. They're telling the kids it's okay to cross the street, and then you took off. So please be careful. And remember, these are new little guys and girls out there. Uh, they're excited about school, and they're not paying the, the attention. Now, we're trying to give them training. And I apologize for this. It's probably the office. And it is. I'll get with them about the crash in a minute. But please drive cautiously. And I think that's all we can ask for that. I want to welcome back our school resource officers this year. Uh, they'll be in and out of all of our county schools, including New Carlisle. And this year you're going to see something that, that you, we've seen before, but you're going to see much more of it from the Clark County Sheriff's Office. Our two school resource officers, 
One's east and one's west have split up the schools in those districts and they are going to be on a daily basis in and out each school. Now along with that, our new corral deputy is going to be up at the school early of the morning. He's going to be out greeting the kids. He's going to be walking through the schools at various times a day. And our goal is for everyone to be safe. So we can use some support on that. I, I wish that we had two more school resource officers. But we all know times are tough and it, it's expensive to have those people. But it's hard to put a price tag on your children too. So we are at the sheriff's office, we're doing everything we possibly can to keep our children safe. I have a grandson that will be out and about before long and, and, and it's a whole different experience. So with that, I'll open up for any questions. Council, any questions? Mr. Lowry? Yes. I believe one day this last week, I, and I don't remember what day it was, please forgive me, there was a wreck on Maine and Jefferson. Do you know anything about it? No, sir, I don't. Do you know anything about it? We responded, yes. Okay. The only, the only thing I'm wondering, was it due to someone being in the non-existent turn lane and turning? That I cannot tell you. I don't know. Okay. 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 If, if you give me the, the date, I'll pull the I don't know, uh, Sergeant Underwood, I was driving through and there was two cruisers there with the lights on. I saw both cars damaged. And what I was getting at, you discussed, Kim, talking about it. I think one of your relatives or something was in an accident there. What would it take? Uh, because you see it all the time. I wanted to ask you this during the report, but we went on to something else. I apologize. To put yellow diagonal lines in that lane from the intersection to the first parking spot north. Well, south it would be, yeah, to the first parking spot. If you come north from the intersection on that side, just put diagonal, yellow diagonal lines to the first parking spot so people will know that they can't pull over that lane and use it as a turn lane. I think maybe Howie had it might be. Yeah, that's who I'm that. asking. That. I mean, why, we can paint anything you want. <laughs> as long as it's not graffiti, yeah, you're okay. Yeah, no, we, we could paint the stripes as long as its purpose is um, legal to deter. Right. And that's what I'm talking can... about. Because it is not a right turn lane, correct? But, but it's used as a right turn constantly. But we probably will need to do some research on that because there is regulations, even though it's in the, within the city of New Carlisle, well, and to, prevent, also, to prevent some wildness that, that right. could happen. And what else happens, it's passing on the right. Mm -hmm. People will pull up there and if they see a car with a left turn signal on, they pull up there and it goes straight through the intersection on that side of the street on the right hand side. And I know there have been several accidents there, and that's a long time to remember where accidents. And if it's visible and if you put diagonal stripes on it, you know. We may have to check with ODOT too to okay. make sure, since that's Mr. a state Mayor. highway, to make sure that we're that's allowed right, to do that. That's right, it is, yes. Okay. Mr. Mayor. All right, Mr. thank Mr. you. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Zell. I have a comment on that. I, I think that if we actually enforce not turning right at that particular intersection, then we actually need a left turn arrow. It is not fair to back up traffic for a a block or two for one person to turn left because nobody can get around them as everybody comes the other direction. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So with an arrow, I think that's a good idea. Without an arrow, we're going to have a serious traffic backup problem if we don't allow people to use the right turn lane. That doesn't there's there's just, not space for a turn lane there. Speaking. No, no. An arrow, right not a lane, an arrow. Okay. He's talking about turning right. Right. Southbound turning right. You can't do that. It's that and through. also passing, Mr. Zambach. They will use the right turn lane if they see a car yep. sitting in the lane you're supposed to be in with left turn signal on. They will go around and right through the intersection. And when they get inside this car, they can't tell what's coming the other way. But the problem is, if there's one guy sitting there turning left, southbound turning left, he holds up traffic mm -hmm. until he can turn left. Right. If there's three of them, you're holding up traffic until they, they might be back, backed up to Lake Avenue before they can go. The, the solution is we do need a lane to the right. Okay. Whatever, whichever works, you know, to correct yeah. the problem. Um, however, make a lane out of it or not make a lane out of it. Or if you don't, at least the market facility is wrong. 
I think between the Sarge and I, we can do and Kim, we can research some laws. I know there are certain times you can go on the right and certain times you can't, depending on color and stuff. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Any other questions for Sarge? Yes, Mr. drug situation? That is information that you have to be pretty high up in command to, to really understand and know how much of a problem there is. And the reason it's so quiet is because we don't want anything leaked out. Those guys spend any place from a, a couple months to six months to maybe a year investigating our drug problems. I can tell you they've been up here recently and there's no plans on them leaving for a while. So uh, we don't get tipped where they're going to be from day to day. Uh, but the drug problem, every city in the United States has a drug problem. Heroin is making, or it has made a terrible comeback. It's very inexpensive now, and uh, it's just an issue all over the country. I, I wish I had an answer for you. Um, there is no good answer other than if you suspect, if you suspect drug activity, please call our non-emergency number. Or you can report it anonymously. Uh, give us as much information as you can. Uh, generally, a gray car outside someone's house, we, we need more information. Uh, I mean, we get a lot of that. Um, and, and even a partial plate is very helpful to us. So if you help us with by documenting what you see, you get several of those. Uh, I'm sure it'll be looked into. You probably won't know it, but it will be. Okay. Yes, is there someone else? Mr. Lauer? Or, so, uh, I'm sorry, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> you're looking for some That'll work. That'll work. Thank you. Uh, I, had, I had a question about the, there was a talk of a, uh, a van, a mobile unit that you could take your prescription medications to and drop them off. Is that in the works or? That was used at um, Rainer Park this past weekend. So it is an operation. I still, uh, at this date, they're probably still reviewing the policy and procedure, but they wanted to get it to a few places so the community could be ready for it and ready to use it. I, I think it's a wonderful idea and it looks like it's going to work. So we don't have a date yet when it would be here, but it's something that we're striving towards having that. It was here right. last Wednesday at the uh, FYI Safety Day. Ms. Jones oh, and I great. went up and looked at it and she gave medicine in, and so it was... Great. How, how did it look? Was it... It worked out all right. They were having trouble with it. I don't know. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I think it wasn't. I think the slot where they put the stuff in isn't quite big enough, so they were actually open the back of the van and just kind of put it in that way. But at least they know what to work on. It it, it was an impressive looking van. Yes. I'm glad this is going forward since we lost the box. I know we both were yeah. concerned about that. It's great that we're being innovative in the department. And that that's the drug of choice by our our high school kids now is prescription drugs. If you're keeping old medication or you have a lot of medication around, it, it, it may not be your children, but you never know who's going to come over and visit. So if you think something's missing and you're losing your mind, just look around. Uh, things will start coming together. But the best thing to do is avoid all that by getting rid of medication you can't use. Mr. Lowry, you had a question. Sergeant Underwood or Ms. Jones, we got an email back uh, a month or two ago, and since we had such a, a big crowd here tonight, the email that was uh, from uh, Gene Kelly talking about New Carlisle, uh, was it overall crime that was down 40 percent, or do you remember that report? Yeah, 44 percent. It was, but it was citywide over 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 the entire city. Yes. Okay. Could you could you go? Do you remember that report? I remember that report. Could you just go over that real quick with them? I mean, because we've touched on you know you know drugs and the bad problems. I just wanted to let them hear some good news. <laughs> Actually, our deputies have been hard at work for several years, not just here, but in Clark County as a whole. And I think overall, um, our criminal crime excluding drugs is down. Uh, from time to time, we'll get one or two groups that will go out and, and cause some issues. Generally, it's theft or vandalism of cars. Uh, we've had had a problem lately in both ends of the county, east and west, of uh, people getting in barns. And if you suspect anything or know of anything, please call us. M a lot of times people call us the next day or have someone else, and, and it's too late for us then. 
If we can get a hot tip, we have a good chance of catching them. So actually, uh, with, our, with our crime decrease, unfortunately, there's also federal money that's decreased, like our OVI grant, and that's our drinking and driving grant. We've done such a good job with it here in Clark County that fatalities have decreased, and we're going to get half the funding to keep those up next year. So that's unfortunate, but it means it's working. So I appreciate you folks going along with us and letting our deputies be a part of that task force. We've been up here several times, and every time we've been up here, we've made an arrest. Um, does that answer your question? Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, hey, Council, anyone else for Sarge? Sergeant, thank you so much. Thanks thank for you, being Mayor. here this evening. We appreciate it. Uh, we've jumped around a lot tonight on the agenda. Uh, anything else for city manager at this point? Comments from member of the public is what should have come up now, but we, of course, talked about things earlier. Is there anyone else in the audience who'd like to say anything this evening? I would like to say one thing. Could you go up to the podium, please, and just no, tell your name and your, if you would, please. Appreciate it. I want to thank you guys for listening to what we have to say about the flag. It does bring a sense of community, to, a community together. And New Carlisle is based on community. It's a small town and we're all united together. So I'm very excited you allowed the flag to come in. I have a question for the um, sergeant. On the prescription drug drop off place, mm -hmm. my husband is a diabetic and he was given so many syringes on me. And then he went to flex pen. I have nowhere to take these unused syringes. Why can't we have them dropped off as well? They're still in the plastic, and I really don't want them in my house. Actually, I believe uh, the Clark County Health Department, I believe though they are, if they're not collecting them now, they will be. But it's still safe to do this, and this is, this is what you can do until we find a method of disposing of those. It, it's very expensive. We used to take them to the hospital, but they were getting so many and they were paying for it, 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 it took out of their budget. Put them in a container such as a thick plastic container, and, and, and we say Tide, but a detergent bottle that has a thick lining on it. Mark it on the outside, needles or sharp objects. Uh, take duct tape and wrap it around the top really good or some kind of good tape, and you can put that in your trash. That, that still can be done. Um, I know that's old school. Um, that's but it, not it, good for the environment. It's not good for the environment, but that is a way that's acceptable at this time to dispose of it. But the health department is working on that issue in Clark County, and hopefully I'll have a better answer for you here in a month or so. Okay. Thank you. Ma'am. Ma'am, can I Ma one minute. I think name? city manager has oh. an answer for you also. Oh, he needs her name too. Debbie Jones. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Harris and I are both working with the clerk, or with the new health clinic in town to try to establish a Sharps take back location. So they have a new director over there and we haven't sat down and met with her yet. I did talk to her last week, but that is something we're trying to get. We've worked with the Clark County Health Department. They gave us all the tips they could, Sergeant Underwood, but no money. So we're, you know, we're trying to get um, waste management to, and the recycle bank to back us with a little money to help cover the, the low cost. But we will let it get out there. Actually, we're going to start a survey program too. Um, we haven't done that yet until we talked to the director, but we wanted to get a survey of how many people would actually use a Sharps take back. Um, it's anonymous. It's just basically, would you have an interest in about how many needles would you be taking back a week? Um, so once we get that out, it'll be public record. Everybody will know that we have that going, but that is something we hope to accomplish soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Stop tonight. Okay. Again, thank you all for being here. We'll go forward then. Any committee reports this evening? Not tonight. Okay. No resolutions no. tonight. Ordinance, would you mind reading that, uh, please, Mr. Collins? Yes. Ordinance 14-42, introduction public hearing and action on 9214. An ordinance providing for the establishment of a new special revenue fund in order to provide for a separate 
accounting of revenues and expenditures associated with the water meter upgrade fund of the city of New Carlisle. Thank you. Other business? Anyone have other business tonight? I do have one. Uh, Mr. John Krebacher is going to be experiencing a birthday the 22nd of this month, which is just a few days. Oh, you're a good one. <laughs> I so, have a question for you. Yes, sir. Does that mean we're going to have to call in that old devil now, or what? <laughs> Could, yeah, but I'd be like the same boat with you guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be joining him on the 22nd also. That's right. I'm going to be experiencing a birthday. You definitely we can call that. And mine's a little bit older than John's, I believe. <laughs> So that's Happy the other birthday. business. Anyone else? Any other business? Yeah, I just got one, one thing. Uh, yes, please. It's just to piggyback on Sergeant Underwood. Uh, here recently, we partnered at the New Carlisle Church of the Bro Brethren on Saturday with Cole Warriors and uh, for an awareness of the prescription drug program. Um, one of the things that, one of the stories that came out of there was this, um, was a young boy. You remember, Carol? Sure. It was, okay, well, it was, I was going to say a young child, you know, was probably about 10, 11, 12 years old. And they went up to the booth and through talking with them or her, you know, got a pill out of their pocket and said, said I, you know, I was going to take this, but now I'm not. And sat down on the table and walked away. So that was from that, you know, just from that one little uh, awareness program. We had approximately a little bit over 200 people, we kind of figure. You know, we cooked 300 hamburgers, we had some more left over, so. Um, and that's what I have to say. Thank you. Uh, Reverend Hertzell, the flags that we had talked about earlier, would you be able to get those to the city building? I will have them for you tonight. That's pretty quick. We're <laughs> close. That's pretty quick. They're, they're 22 feet by 40 feet, if I'm not Good to hear. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other questions? Anything? Okay. Our executive session. Uh, well, we have some other things to read tonight. But I'm sorry. Yeah, Thank your part. Would you go ahead, please? Yes, uh, city offices will be closed on Monday, September the 1st for Labor Day. There will be a joint government meeting Monday, September the 29th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. And the New, New Carl Crime Watch will be having a meeting on Wednesday, September the 10th at 6.30 here at Smith Park Shelter House. Okay, thank you. Uh, city Manager, would you mind letting everyone know where they can see these meetings? if you would please yes our website is still under construction but there is a new tab that says council on the top of the front page and if you uh, open up that page um, there will be a, 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 a black box that is a YouTube connection so you can actually go back and look at past meetings there's also our agendas our minutes and any attachments, I can't remember what else is there, but um, we've been doing, I think Jason's been doing it since about the early July, so the last couple meetings are on there. They're real exciting. Yes, <laughs> so please. And I believe it's also on public television. It's also, yeah. yes, it's also on DATV, which is channel 23. That just started last month. And that is on Tuesdays, and I don't remember the times. So it's on Tuesdays and Fridays, right after our council meeting, the same Tuesday, week of our meeting. Tuesday evening, 7 to 9. Is that okay. Friday mornings? It's in the morning, like 7 to 9 or? 7 to 9 on yeah, Friday mornings. Friday mornings. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you yeah, for the update. That. Appreciate it. Uh, executive session, there's none tonight. And I would. Uh, Mr. Mayor. I'm here. We adjourn. We are adjourned. <laughs>